everybody, my name is Becca. I'm a theater and dance teaching artist, and I'm here to do some active storytelling with you. Today's story is A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carl. As always, we're going to need our four actor tools to help us tell our story. And our actor tools are our bodies, our voices, our minds, and our imaginations. So let's use those actor tools to bring A House for Hermit Crab to life. It's time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this shell. Hermit Crab had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Uh-oh, that means it's too tight in his shell. Can you give yourself a really, really, really tight squeeze and make yourself really small so you feel really tight and snug? Nice job. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean. But it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. Can you make a scared face like Hermit Crab? <sighs> nice job. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wriggling and raggling inside to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so, well, so plain, thought Hermit Crab. Hmm, I wonder what he's gonna do with his shell. Let's find out. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. Can we wave our arms like sea anemone tentacles? Back and forth. Good job. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain. It needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. Can you pick up the sea anemone with your Hermit Crab claw? Ready? Reach out, pick it up and place it on your back. Excellent. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly across the sea floor. Can we make our bodies really big like starfish? And make a big smile. Excellent. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come decorate my house? I would, signaled the little sea star. So Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. Can you make a frozen shape like the coral in the picture? Ready? Three, two, one, freeze! Good freeze! How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In June, Hermit Crab came upon a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went, picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. So happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. Now, these sea urchins are really prickly and, sp and spiky, so let's really carefully reach out, pick it up, <gasps> place it on the shell. Nice job. 
In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark in here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, said the sea urchin. Ooh, I wonder what they're gonna do in this forest of seaweed. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. Oh, how bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. Can we wiggle our hand like a lanternfish swimming around? Nice job, can we wiggle it fast? Oh, and slow. Excellent swimming, everybody. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. Can everyone say hooray? Ready? One, two, three, hooray! But in November, Hermit Crab felt his shell was a little bit too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown and soon he would have to find another bigger home. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like my family. How could I ever leave them? Oh, Hermit Crab's feeling a little sad thinking about leaving his friends. Can you show me a sad face? Good job. Let's see what happens next. Whoops. Uh-oh. There we go. Sorry, friends. In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered hermit crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. Can we all say that together? Ready? One, two, three. I promise. Oops, silly pages. There we go. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. I couldn't stay in that little shell forever, thought Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. Can we all wave goodbye to the shell? Goodbye, shell. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked a little, well, plain, but... <gasps> Sponges, he thought, barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels, Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. The end. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you're looking for more children's books to read, check out your local library's digital resources. They have lots of wonderful free children's books available just at the touch of a button. As always, I encourage you to support the arts during this difficult time by donating to a local arts organization. My favorites that I've worked with are down in the description below, but you can always donate to any organization you feel needs it most. Thank you guys again so much for joining me, and I'll be back with more stories soon. Bye!